All right. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us over on the Outspoken Nutrition. I am so excited to meet you and hear about your new book, Collecting True Friends. You know, I think a lot of times we miss the connection between wellness and relationships. And that's really what we're going to be discussing today. And you're really the expert in that area. So you want to go ahead and give our listeners a little bit of a rundown about your background? Oh my goodness. It is such a pleasure. I've been excited to be here too, Laura. It's, and I love your energy. So this, anybody that's tuning in, they need to just like get to know Laura in person too. I, I hope we get to meet in person. Uh, so my background is very interesting. We were, we were just chatting about this a little bit. I actually started out in college thinking I was going to go into law school. And then I ended up going into healthcare, which anybody that has ever gone into healthcare, you realize that you're drawn to healthcare because that you're a giver and there's something about you that wants. So we went along and we did the strategy and I developed the patient care experience and had a wonderful 20 some years there. And then about six years ago, I started Red Hawk Strategic Solutions, which was consulting. And it was interesting because I immediately went from one career, jumped into entrepreneurship, had no clue what I was doing, except that somebody said, can I hire you separately when you, when you leave there? And I was like, well, I guess so. And so the journey began. And what I learned in six years ago was that when you rebrand yourself and reinvent yourself in anything that you do in life, it's vital that you build a network. Mm -hmm. And it, so as I was doing that and reaching back out to all the people that I'd known in my healthcare administration years, I'm like, hey, I'm over here. I'm doing the Red Hawk now. This is my business. I'm consulting, training, speaking, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, is that where you went? So that began the networking like on on vigilant mode. It was like, here I am, here I am. Let's, what can I do for you? Where are you at? And it was a whole new rebranding because I had to get disassociated from where I was, right? Well, when I did that along the way, the craziest thing happened about two and a half years into the business and I'm working and I'm doing strategy and building businesses, right? And instead I was at an event down in Atlanta and that's why you were thinking I was from Atlanta. And this these women kept coming up to me at an event and they would hold my business card in their hands and they'd go, so Red Hawk, so do you teach professional networking? And Laura, I kept correcting him. I kept saying, no. <laughs> so, so for your listeners out there, if you own a business, when somebody consistently asks you if you provide something, so if you own a restaurant, for example, and if they keep coming in and you sell coffee and they go, do you sell donuts? And you keep saying no. Okay, you might want to take the hint that maybe they want something and they're telling you. So it was about the 19th person who had my business card in her hand looking at it. And finally, she put it in terms that I could understand because I, I guess I was just being hyper-focused in a different direction that day. I was going to say dense, and I don't think that's very kind, but I, it, I really was having a dense moment. And she looks at my card and she looks up at me and she says, can I pay you to teach me how to professionally network? And it was like, ding, 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 the light bulbs go off. And I'm like, my, I feel my head nodding going, yes, I, yes, you can. <laughs> so that started my business in a different trajectory than I planned. And that really became where I started evaluating that that's what I've been really great at is for decades, I have built professional relationships and even better than that, I built friendships. So those folks that I reached out to, to tell them I had rebranded, a lot of my colleagues, neighbors, along the way, they became true friends. And that's what the book is about, collecting true friends, is how we look at the people that we encounter in our lives. And then all of a sudden, we look at them differently. And it's and collecting is a verb, right? So collecting true friends is an, a movement, and it's a verb, and it's a way that we change our mindset. So that's how everything came about to getting this book launched and written. You know, I love the idea when you were talking about, you know, your clients, as you reached out, you learned that they were your friends, because I know something similar has happened with us in the podcast. Like so many guests I've had on the podcast over the last two and a half years. And some of them are really good friends now that I'll call up. We have tequila chats with, or we just have, you know, a good, just laugh. And it's, it's those things that I don't think I have expected when I started a podcast that the guests that would come on my podcast would be part of this friend group, the support group. And it's really amazing because I think 
And like your, your people pointed out to you, it was something that was missing. And it's just, so when I heard about your collecting true friends book, I was like, you know, that's so true because we think of clients as just clients or are, you know, they're, they're just that work piece essentially where they're not, there's a much deeper relationship that can happen and support system and everything that, you know, it can really grow from that. So it's a really amazing you know, compartmentalizing is what I'm hearing you say. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it becomes more in incorporated essentially. And it, yeah, it's absolutely. So tell me a little bit about some of the stories that have come out from you meeting some people through your businesses. It's it's been it's been quite a journey. I I got to tell you, and I'm glad that God put me here and that that I listened because I'm getting better at listening. But it's it's definitely been a journey. Uh, but some of the friendships that came out, for example, we just got back from the lake. We were in Lake Gaston this past weekend, and I was it was a gathering of people that actually we used to do projects together when I was in my former corporate world. And as I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about how we were there. And then this is the cool part. I'd love to tell you this story too. We actually brought our moms this time and we, when we integrated them into the fold and now they have become best friends, which was just incredible. Make sure I tell you about that whole socialization thing from a healthy nutrition, outspoken. I mean, this is what your podcast is about. It's a great story. Uh, there's my teaser. Uh, but, but as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know, uh, we've got uh, Chris Ann here, who's her host. And Bruce, who they really didn't know each other very well, but they knew each other. Uh, but Bruce was the one that when I was in another career, he was the one that stepped up to me and said, Elizabeth, I really want you to go down to North Carolina and work with my team. Would you please consider doing that? And I remember when he was thinking, asking me to do that, this, you know, this was towards the end when I was, and I I'd served about two more years in that company. And I thought, go to North Carolina every day, but he was my friend. He'd started out as a colleague. He started out just strictly professional. And then over the cups of coffee that we had, and then seeing all the, the births and weddings and deaths and everything that you do and you, you bond with people. And then we got our families together. He became a good friend. He's one of my best friends. And it was really interesting because if he had not sent me back down to North Carolina through his persistence, and that's what friends do, that's what true friends do. By the way, a true friend is the person that's going to step up, that's going to say, I think this is going to be really good for you. I know I've asked you before. I know you said you weren't interested, but would you at least consider this? And that's what he did for me. And I was like, really? I got down there in North Carolina. I had a ball. I met all sorts of new friends. Once again, they started out the business world. Then, then I get introduced. I met people in the university. I later on in my Red Hawk, I ended up doing the strategic plan for the food bank because of the network that I built down there. But if Bruce had not been so insistent to get me to, to move and go down and work in North Carolina with his team, guess what? We wouldn't be sitting there at that lake with our mothers coming together and had this fabulous weekend because what happened is when I went back into that world, I ran into Chris Ann again. And when I ran into Chris Ann, we hadn't worked together in 10 years. And it was like, oh my goodness. And she's like running up to me. What are you doing here? Well, we rekindled a relationship that became even a deeper friendship. And because of that, now all of us, so I'm sitting there and I'm looking around the room and I'm thinking, you know, you start out here with people. And like you said, you can cut, or my words, you can kind of compartmentalize them because you can think, well, that was fun. We finished a project or I did this with you, but you don't really understand that the future value is that amazing true friendship that you can have. And now we're traveling together. So I, I hope that kind of gives you an example of where we're, is that good? <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. You know, that's it. It's amazing because one of the things I kept hearing you say is that friend gave you almost kind of your purpose in different things. They highlighted what you needed to be doing. And we know when we talk about the core principles of wellness, we deal with nutrition, sleep, movement, but then relationships and purpose is a really big part of that. I like to always think of, we always see that marketing picture of the iceberg and the top of the iceberg is, you know, the fitness, the nutrition, the sleep, everything that we know we need to do to be healthy. But what we forget is that 
that foundational part. And that is our relationships and our purpose. So when we have good relationships and they're feeding our purpose, that's when we really start encompassing really that state of well-being. It is. And studies show us that it, when we have amazing, and I keep, I keep throwing the word out there because I believe it's true friendships, right? When we have that though, our, our longevity from having positive people in our life and having friendships and connections, our longevity increases. So if we're looking for a youth elixir, instead of maybe all of our vitamins that we keep taking, I mean, I love vitamins, I take them, but I'm just saying, you know, you can eat right all you want, but like you said, there's four components and I love that nutrition, sleep movement and the relationship with the purpose. And so let me, can I tell you about what happened with the mother story? Cause this oh, absolutely. Is this is really amazing. So last year, my mother, who is just this vibrant, vibrant person, I mean, it's, she's the type of person, she just recently stopped driving. But I, when I would go into the neighborhood and I'd stop at the pharmacy or the grocery, oh my gosh, are you Betsy Duncan's daughter? And then they would come and tell me, right? Like it's a rock star. Like, are you Beyonce's daughter? I mean, it was like, I mean, it was always the same thing. And I, and I learned, I just have to stand there and listen. And then they would proceed to tell me how my mom had this profound effect on the stranger, right? She told me I should this or gave me a prayer or, or stopped and paused and gave me a kind word in that day. So my mother was like this rock star that's in this community, right? Well, the, the interesting thing is, is that the last year, though, she had some sort of heart issue that popped up and it really put her in the house. So beyond having pandemic and then us being shut in. And by the way, that was another reason why the book is being launched now, because it was originally supposed to be launched next spring. And I just kept having the, the calling that said people are hurting, people are lonely, they need to know how to make friends you need to get the book out now. So that's why we're doing it in the fall. And um, with my mother, though, what happened is when from that medical issue, she became isolated. And, you know, social isolation is one thing. But then also when you're not really good, strong on your feet. So she's been she's been doing much better. But what I did not realize is that the lack of her engagement from not driving and going up and seeing all these people and gifting kindness to two or three random people a day, sprinkling it everywhere. Like she's like a magic pixie dust where she goes, right? Well, she also in return was getting that is, and that that was her core elixir. Like you said, the relationship and purpose, and that was feeding into her. So when we were away this weekend and we had introduced our two mothers together, and then they said, Betsy, you need to come to the lake with us. My mother thought they were just being polite. And I'm like, no, mom, they really want you to come. Well, she starts out, she comes in, she's walking with a cane, uh, pretty good. You know, she's she's not falling over or anything, but she's, she's you know, she's walking with a cane. By the end of the weekend, and I hope your listeners are, are catching this, a 90-year-old woman and her 92-year-old friend, okay, they are standing straighter. They're not leaning on the cane as much. They are engaging and they stayed up every night sitting on the couch talking and I have never seen them eat that much. So you talk about your nutrition. They were like, hey, I'm kind of hungry. Their hunger went up. Their thirst went up. Because why? Because it's like it's all this power. And, the, and what was incredible, and this is the power of when you collect friends, right, is that you get that energy. And this is what the socialization that I had forgotten about. Nine people in a cabin together, there is a natural energy. And, and you cannot, I mean, it's just, we feel it off of people, right, Laura? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, going back to that whole energy piece, you know, I love the story with your mother and her friend because that is just amazing because it's something that we don't realize and we don't, you know, take more energy to put into that because if we can stand in a room with people with a bunch of just bad moods <laughs> and you walked in with a good mood, do you think you're walking out with a good mood? <laughs> no, you're going to walk out with a bad mood because we do, we absorb all that energy. So when you have people all together in a good mood, this is, it naturally will absorb into you and you're more likely to walk out in a good mood, feeling good, standing tall, you know, your face <laughs> is brighter, you're eating healthier because you feel 
good. And this is really why relationships make such a big difference in our wellness. I mean, we see it in you know, older age living homes where they're bringing in dogs or mm. school kids to sing because that relationships of, you know, talking to the children or petting the animals really helps them. So it's so important that we're getting these relationships back. And the one thing as you were talking, I kept you know, it kept kind of coming to me was a lot of times when we go to networking events, I know I'm an introvert. If I go to networking events, it takes everything out of me. Like I feel exhausted, but I know you are a member of Fab Women as well. And I am too. That is the one networking event that I get totally energized. And it's really because it's just a good bunch of women. And even though we're all business owners, it seems just naturally a lot of egos get checked at the door. So it's good conversations. I know that's kind of how me and you met. It's exactly. just, you're building these friendships. And I think that's really the key. And obviously, you know that from your book. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's right. So, so that if we look at the people that we just bump into, whether we're networking or say we're going to um, a church meeting, our neighborhood a homeowners association, uh, at the local picnic, or you're going to one of your spouse's events. I mean, it, there's, we meet so many people every day and it's what we want to do with it. That is what's going to be important. And I do agree with you because, and I'm an extrovert, so I, I totally feel where you're coming from as an introvert. I would say it's an extrovert's job to try to find some conversation for an introvert to know how to come into it and also allow space for that. And, and, I, and I talk about that quite a bit in the book because some of my friends are introverts and one of them said, to me, she said the most interesting thing. She said, you know, just because I have introversion in the way that I communicate, I'm standing there waiting for my break in the conversation. I have patiently listened and what a lot of people do, and then they never get to, to become good friends with her. And she's a really cool person. She's been my best friend since I was 14. I've got lots of best friends and she's been my longest one that's put up with me, right? But when Terry said that, it was like, wow, Okay, so you're waiting. So you're, it's not just a matter of patience, but you've been waiting to talk. And now when you're waiting to talk, and here's the kicker, this was really disappointing. And she said, that's when usually people go, well, great, I'm going to go get another drink now. Or, or, yeah, nice talking to you. And it was like, and I thought, well, that's the clue right there. I was, they were talking to somebody, not talking mm -hmm. with somebody. And they don't give her the opportunity to then like, and she's not, She's not just standing there. I mean, she's she's engaging, but she'll ask them a question, ask them a question. And I watched her. She's very good at it. And she's pacing it and asking a question. Well, what they're waiting for, and maybe it's happened to you too, Laura, is then you all are waiting for then us to ask a question, us to ask a question. It's like, okay, so that's when the volley goes back and forth, right? So we can do that everywhere where we go. But in networking, that's why, in my belief, and since I, I teach that too, I think that's why it's so hard because it can seem very one-sided and God help us if we get hold of the person that won't shut up about their business. Right. I mean, I'm like rubbing out the, if, if you're, if you're not on the video of this, I'm rubbing out the crease on my forehead, just thinking, about it. but you know, they're, they're just determined that you need to know every feature about what they're selling and you need this down your throat, down your throat. Right. Oh my God. I'm cracking up over here because it's so true. And <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because as the introvert, a lot of times when you, and very much like your friend, you get into those conversations and it's like, okay, I got to pull away from this. I'll find myself just kind of relaxing in the corner, trying to like gain my energy back. And it's always that person that comes up to me and I'm like, ah, run, run. Right, <laughs> but right. it, it's so interesting when we talk about good friendships, but we also can have those friendships that steal that energy from us and steal that power. You know, it's so often I see, you know, when I'm coaching people and we're going through everything and someone's having a really hard time, maybe keeping to an eating plan that they chose or finding the will to exercise or whatever it is. Generally, as we dig deeper, mm -hmm. it usually comes down to a relationship piece. If it's a friend, a family, a spouse, there's something that's stealing their energy from them. 
And that's really where we have to kind of learn from our friendships. Is this friendship, you know, promoting us? Is it giving us value or is it stealing from us? And that's something I know you were talking about it in the very early introduction piece is that, you know, you had those friends that would like lift you up and say, I need you here, go here, or can I pay you? Right. Yeah. Can I pay you? Yeah. <laughs> Always and, a word to an entrepreneur when they're clueless. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's just so interesting because those are their friendships. And I know I always have a little saying I have to my clients when we're in this kind of toxic environment. And, you know, obviously we always point them to therapy and to talk about it and seek professional help, but is toxic friendships, regardless if it's family, whoever it is, they're toxic. And it doesn't mean that you have to sit in that because not only is it going to affect your mental health, it's going to affect where you're going in the future. And it's definitely going to affect your physical health. It's going to affect your sleep. It's going to affect your stress. It will even show up on a blood glucose monitor. So for those data-driven people, it's going to show up and it's so important. Because stress rises your glucose levels. And that's why diabetics that are stressed out, you're right, Laura. And that's a beautiful point because it's like, okay, if you want to just look at the data... Just let's, let's just look at the data, the trending. Okay. And then, and then we can be there. I mean, so, but, but we don't have to look at the data if we're just honest with ourselves. And, and I write about this in the book quite a bit because I, and I tried to make the book so that we knew what to do, like how do we, so the, the subtitle to the book is uh, be worthy. So it's collecting true friends, be a magnet worthy of those worth of your time and devotion. So it's because we're given our time and we're giving our devotion. And I know this is kind of an odd word. So I, it's, it is a little bit of a faith play because I am, a, I am a, a faith, very strong faith. But I also think we are devoted to our friends. We are devoted to our family. We're devoted to our work. There's a lot of ways that we devote ourselves. And you're right. When we don't put ourselves in the place that consistently we're being fed, instead we're being st- starved because it's like we're just it's like they're just either pulling that energy out of us or that life force out of us and it's draining it's it's starving us in some way so it's either nutritionally starving us or it's aging us um it's increasing all sorts of things that we don't want increased and you know it makes us fat right because we there's our cortisol levels go up and when our cortisol levels go up, it doesn't matter how much we're trying to eat right, diet and exercise, we're, we're going to gain weight. So yeah. I mean, it's, so I, I get that. So what I would recommend to people too, there's a couple things. I'll give you some tips on this too. What I've learned is before you go in a place with a large amount of people. So, um, and I, and I'm moving my hands if you can't see, see, but uh, I like to do what I call a hedge of protection. So, and I actually kind of just envision it as going around me and everything, because it's really important to pull your energy towards you and, and to protect yourself. If you get near somebody that is just ranting either in anger is the hardest one, because for me, anger is very, very confusing until I found out that it's rooted in a fear. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so if a person's just vibrating with anger, that can really penetrate us. What I actually do, I was looking for a book here, is I will actually take a book and I will hold it. I will put something or my purse or book or something. But if you can hold something closer to your chest while somebody's near you with that, you will actually, I don't, I'm not sure I understand all of it. And people that study energy probably will know better, but it's proven for me that it protects it's like, it does not let that penetrate through to you. So the other thing you can do, step two, is physically take a step back. Mm. So, and, and if you've ever noticed that, that is human nature. When somebody's giving you bad news or something scary, something something shocks us, what do we do? Woo, we move back, right? So your natural responses are take a step back. So that protects us too when we're around the people like that. So the question I would ask, and and this is this is in the book, I talk quite a bit about that, is is it a consistent thing? If it's not a consistent thing, then that's where we love our friends through it. We give them the unconditional. We do still protect ourselves. 
right? And we try to think of how we to help them. But if, if we find out it's consistent, then that's when we have to look at, does it line up with our values? And if you don't know what your values are, uh, like, for example, you and I are about health, we're about, you know, happiness, we're about, you know, and, and, I, and, and I make sure, you know, people know that, that, you know, I'm about helping others and stuff. And, um, and I believe God has put the me here to be that influencer as a relationship person. So, but we have to know what we stand for and what our core is. And when we know what we are, it becomes really easy to if somebody's consistently getting too close to us. And like you said, whether it's family, and I know we all have family, that's why God gives you friends. <laughs> I love that saying. Right? So it's like, so we, so it's a choice though. And that's our choice. And, and we don't have to be dwelling in that area. Uh, I think though what happens, and, and y'all will love this. And when you read the book, you'll laugh when you hear this. But I related it to a metaphor of have you gone to some place and you see this woman with this huge purse and she's carrying it around and you're thinking why did you bring that to the stadium what do you got in that like like did you pack the lunch for everybody no this is my purse or you'll see her getting going through an airport and you're thinking you knew you were going on this trip you still haven't emptied that thing out we're like what what is in there? So, so, and I'm, I'm, I'm the little minx that, that always likes to ask the person this. I'm like, you know what? I've just split a nail. Could I, do you have a nail file in there? And I do it just to see if they know it's in that daggone bag of 20 pounds that they're lugging around. Right. And, and, and you know what they'll always say to me? It's in here somewhere. Oh, uh, well, you know, and then they start, well, how did this get in there? Oh my gosh. And it's, oh, whoa. Right. And it's like the Mary Poppins bag. So the so I know you're probably thinking, Elizabeth, why are you talking about a heavy purse? And it's a metaphor. Because that's what happens when we don't look at the friends in our inner circle and the people that get our time and energy. And all of these people are like the same thing. Like we picked it up and we go, this will be great. This person's wonderful. Okay. I like this. I'm, I'm going to put you in my purse. Oh, and you know what? And this is a cool purse. And I'm going to put this, um, here's another person. And the next thing we know, we load our purse up, which is the same thing like our inner circle. And somebody that was a good fit 20 years ago, now they're toxic. They haven't evolved with us. Or maybe they've gone down an evil mm -hmm. trajectory because like they're in stuff that like, okay, that's just not healthy. Okay. And you've tried to help them. I had friends like that. And it was like, okay, can we get you back over here? And then no matter what you did, mm -hmm. they weren't, they, they weren't going to come back to the healthy path. They were just going to keep staying in their, their self-destructive, whatever, and the next drama. Right. But, but they're in the purse. And then you got this woman and she's lugging it around, right? Like, I don't know why this thing's so heavy. That's how we get in life. So that was one of my metaphors that I used in there to kind of get people to think about your inventory. What's, who's getting your time and energy? And like back to the subtitle, you know, be that, be a magnet for those worthy of your time and devotion. And, um, and that means we also have to be the person of a good person, the way we show up. Right. Oh, absolutely. And I love the, I actually love your analogy with the purse because it's so true. You know, think about when we do our health, if we're getting on a new diet, half the time we do the big pantry clean out, right? We clean out our pantry, get all that bad food out of there. But when is the last time we did a friendship clean out or a friendship overhaul, you know, because there are those people and you're absolutely right. You can have friends from 20 years ago that were great friends 20 years ago and you needed them and you leaned on them and they helped you. But maybe now in those 20 years, they're just taking more from you. You know, I always tell somebody, if you have to get on a phone call to call somebody and it's. Uh, I have to give this person a call. <laughs> Why? Why? If it's that level, either one, you got to do something in your mindset to flip it around right. or you got to step away or change the relationship because it will directly affect how you eat, how you sleep, how you move. Because if you're exhausted from talking to somebody and we've always had, we've all had that friend, I'm sure that's been on the phone and it's just negative, negative, negative. And it's just nothing. And you just get off the phone and you're like shaking it off because you're like, I just got to get it. But then do you want to go to the gym after that? Do you want to eat a healthy meal? No, you want mac and cheese and to sit on the couch with bonbons because you just <laughs> want to cry your eyes out. 
<laughs> and, 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 it's, and if that's consistently how they show up, then after a while, you just, and, and what I've tried to do, because I've had, I've had some people like that in my life, is, is, I'll, is I gently try to point out to them, I'll be like, you know, gosh, I just, I just was so hoping that your life was getting better and you'd be happier this time when I talked to you. And you, and so it's like a gentle nudge because I have to kind of nudge them. It's kind of like, so I'm, I'm trying to take them out of the bag. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling you out of the purse and I'm looking, do, do you, <laughs> right? So I'm kind of like, I was hoping you'd be a little bit more happier. And you know, what's interesting is usually those are the people that will say, what are you talking about? I'm absolutely happy. I'm filled with joy. And yeah, and, 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 seriously, seriously. And if you're talking to them in person, they'll, their face will be all squunched up like with stress. I'm like, I don't know what you, what about that? And I'll, and I, once again, because I'm that little person that's going to say, hmm, okay, well, let me push, the, push the bruise a little bit. Because this is supposed to be your friend, right? You're not supposed to just go, I can't take you anymore and walk away. But I'll say to them, I'll say, well, the last couple months when I talked to you, it was this, it was that, it was that, this and this and that. I'm listening. And it just seems like you're not, you're not able to, to either move beyond that or, you know, get, get, get some joy in your life, you know, and I'll usually ask them, I love your, your, your suggestion, you know, are you exercising, you know, or are you, are you doing, what's your, what are you doing for self-care, you know, or, or, or what can I do to help you so that you're more joyful in your life? Because it really pains me as your good friend to see you this miserable. And it's really interesting when you, because now notice I didn't say you're just miserable and I can't take this anymore. There's a totally different thing, right? It's like, as your dear friend, it hurts me to see you miserable. It hurts me to see you lacking joy, right? So when we say things like that to people, awareness, and I talk a lot about this on this, awareness and then discernment, a lot of times we don't even know that we have become that person. Sometimes it's just become so normal. I call that boiled frog syndrome. <laughs> have you ever heard about that? No, but that's funny. <laughs> It's a horrible thing, right? And I don't know if it's a true study or if it's one of those urban myths, but uh, a frog, that, so hopefully this wasn't a real thing, but, but the story goes like this. So, so a frog, well, you could put him in a pot of water and he'll sit there and then you can slowly turn up the, the temperature of it and it gets warmer and warmer and the, the frog will actually stew himself to death, right? So I don't, like I said, I don't know. So all the animal lovers out there, don't, don't go crazy. It may just be an urban myth, but here's the point of the story is, but they'll say if, so when the water's like hot, right? If you take another frog and you try to drop them in, that frog's like, heck no, and pops himself out of there. But I call it boiled frog syndrome because that's what happens is sometimes we get in our lives and we just get so consistent with like, you know, I got to do this. I got to do that. I, you know, I have to take care of the kids, my parents, my caregiver, my school, my work, my blah, 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 blah. And it gets so heavy. We do lose our joy. Mm -hmm. And it's, an, and when somebody says something like that to us, it's not until then, Laura, that then that's a sign of a true friend that says, do I seem like I don't have any joy anymore? You know, and it, they may not accept it at the moment, but I guarantee you they're going to hear it. So they're either going to fight you on it or they're going to absorb it, but there you will at least plant some awareness to them. And what I have noticed too is that the next time I will see somebody like that, they'll say, "You know what? You know what? I, I really enjoyed today, and this made me feel better." I mean, it's like they're trying to prove to me, like I'm paying attention, like you know. And do you think we could, you, you know, do, you know? And I really that made me feel good, and I liked that, and I noticed that I'm not going to do that anymore. So if that's the type of friend that's evolving then there's potential for us to stay there. Uh, but I know, for example, when I went through, I had uh, two major deaths in my life uh, within a 12 month period. And one of them was my best friend who died in my arms. And see, I'm getting all choked up. And even though that's been like 15 years, right? But I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I did not know I was suffering from PTS. So sometimes we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true sometimes we don't and like no. you were saying sometimes your friends are like well no I'm happy yeah. it's just they don't realize you know there's going to be an episode on in the month of this release too and the episode is called sitting in the suck like how do you sometimes life does give us just sucky situations <laughs> you know how do we just handle that and I love the idea of what you were talking with self-care because I think so often we think of self-care as this foo-foo, like, 
oh, I don't have time for self-care. I don't have money for self-care. And it's not. And one of the biggest things is when you're dealing with somebody that maybe is sitting in the suck and as a good friend, you need to be there to support them. And it might be difficult for you, but it's so important after those conversations or those situations where you kind of feel a little bit dragged down. It's so important in that moment to go get you to do self-care. And no matter what it is, it could be walking in nature. Actually, there's so many studies that show just walking 20 minutes in nature can completely flip our mindset, you know? Yes. So if we just, it doesn't even have to be going to the spa or getting a facial or some extravagant thing. Sometimes it's just getting out in nature, maybe taking a bath, water, another really good way of getting that energy off. If you have a hot tub, go sit in a hot tub, but something to allow you to give yourself moments to reflect on it, right. to sit in a little bit of silence and release it because it's so important because there are going to be times that we're going to need to be that friend that's going to have to hold somebody through something or support somebody. But at the same time, we have to be taking care of ourselves. I, I love that. And you know what that is? That's empathy. And a lot of people don't understand there's a difference between pity. And my husband explained this to me. He said when he broke his arm and he was a young boy, the worst thing anybody could say is like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. And he was like, I don't want your pity. Like, stop, right? So we don't want pity from people that, you know, like, because we're sitting in the suck. <laughs> I love that expression, right? So we don't want to make people pity. But what we want is we want empathy. And uh, I talk a lot about this too in there because particularly very strong, vibrant, dynamic people that maybe, for example, we don't, we don't wear everything on our sleeve or we're not quite as transparent with our, with our emotions or if we're sitting in the suck right at the moment, right? Uh, we're not, it's not that we're hiding how we're feeling, but it's that we know we also have to persevere. The kids still need to be fed. The dog still needs to be walked. The bills still need to be paid. I mean, we 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 got stuff we got to do, right? So it's like we we have to pull ourselves up, and I call it muster through it, right? But the people that are friends, and this is really important, and I'm really glad you touched on it today because I people come to me all the time, and they're like, Elizabeth. I was really disappointed and disappointments a lot to do with whether a friendship lasts or not. And one of the major disappointments that I've been picking up on as far as from a health aspect of a relationship staying healthy or not a relate, you know, or a friendship lasting is when somebody's hurting and the other person, particularly if the person's strong natured, the other person's just like, you got this. Hey girl. Hey guy, you're going to be okay. And they don't want cheerleading. What they want is just maybe, and if you're near them and you don't mind, give them a hug. I mean, just, you know, they, what they need is they need a hug or they need a touch on the arm. Or like I did last week, I sat down and wrote heartfelt cards out. And then I love to use highlighters. I usually have a whole bunch with me. Um, and then colorful sticky notes or something. But just tell them, like, when you said this on the phone, or I ran into you at the store. I just want you to know my heart stopped for a moment. I just, I, I, I'm, I wish there was something I could do. It, it, it's, I, it's horrible the things that you're having to go through. When you say words like that to people and they get a card, it's not pity. It's empathy that says, you know, you are not alone. You are not alone, and and, and it's okay too, Laura. If you haven't talked, like one of the ladies. I hadn't talked to in probably nine months and we see each other peripheral. But when I had announced to her, I sent her a note about the book coming out because I know she had said, hey, Elizabeth, when the book comes out, please make sure you tell me, right? Well, I had texted it to her and sent it to her and no response. And I thought, that's not like her. So I actually texted her a note later and I'm like, are you okay? Because, and I was very transparent. I'm like, because I was telling you about my good news, but I didn't hear anything. And that's when I found out that her whole world had imploded. Okay. And that's, that's when you take a moment and you you write a card or you video something and you and you text it over to them. But let them hear your voice, let them hear your words, let them hear your love and stop for a moment. Just don't give them the you're gonna be okay. I know there's life sucks sometimes. And I oh, and the worst thing they can do too. Let me tell you, here's tip two on that one. 
Don't you love the person that when your life is a hot mess or you're in the suck, as you say it, and you mention the subject, okay, I know every, all your listeners are going to be like, yeah, I know what this one, so you, so you mentioned like, um, and, and I'm just going to keep it really vanilla, but you know, like my car broke down. Well, let me tell you about when my car broke down mm -hmm. and let me tell you about what it was like, well, I thought we were talking about me and how I got stranded on the side of the road and the tornado came through and the flood came. I mean, you don't even get to tell your story, right? You're just like, because they go right to, well, I had that, that happened. Well, let me tell you. And then, and then, so you don't ever get to express the suck that you're in, if this is okay to use your term. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. And it's, and then what happens? You walk away feeling unheard. And that's what you and I were talking about before we started this is that we recently, I was over in a, in a grocery store and, the, and I heard an employee say the most horrible thing to me because I was a leader for 30 years. And when the, all of the three different employees said to me, it doesn't matter, they're not going to, management's not going to listen to me. It's the same thing with friendships. It's the same thing with colleagues. It's the same thing with our family. When we feel like, we have something to say and it's important. And in this case, it was like, okay, the customers kept saying, hey, this is not, this is not good. No bueno, this is not working. Fix this, right? And that the employees knew their voices were unheard. When we think our voices are unheard, you talk about the lack of, of, of all of the good ability to heal and feel better. It doesn't matter how much good food we're eating and, and, and we're trying to, to walk it off and stuff. What happens is we feel invisible. And, and we need empathy. We need people to, we don't need to hear all the story. I mean, it's okay to say, I've been through that. Oh my gosh, it was terrible for me too. But tell me, tell me what happened, but stop ourselves to not make the moment all about them. And I know everybody's listening that has had that happen because that's happened to me repeatedly. And I think that's why when I was dealing with PTS from my friend dying in my arms, I didn't know that because I never got to that part in the story to tell people just how traumatic it was, right? And it was, and it was always they'd convert it to who had died in their life. They've been through this. They've lost this, and and, and then of course me, I'm like trying to help them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. We gotta, as friends, we have to listen. Sometimes the best thing we can do is an advice. It's just listening. And I really love everything you're talking about in your book. Can you let our listeners know where they can find this book? Oh, yes, absolutely. So collectingtruefriends.com is the website. So come to it and you can actually leave a comment and you can talk to me. And, and or if you need a speaker, I'm, I'm willing to do that or book clubs and help with that too. And then it will be on Amazon as well. So take a peek. On, it's called Collecting True Friends. And I'm Elizabeth Duncan hyphen Hawker, Duncan Hawker. I'm the only Elizabeth Duncan Hawker in the world. So they can't, they can't mess that up. So um, it's, it's just such a pleasure. And we want to help people, Laura. I love what you're doing. I was so drawn to you because I know you're helping people with this amazing outspoken nutrition podcast that the, the wealth of wisdom on concepts and ideas that people are not even aware of that's going to be on your podcast and it's already been on it. I mean, you're, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing what I call it God's work, but you're, you're out there, you're making a difference. And when we make a difference, like you said, we have purpose. Hmm. So oh. thank you for having me today. Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much. And for anyone listening, you could check out the show notes. All Elizabeth's links will be there for her website, her book. We'll have our Amazon link. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure from the bottom of my heart. And I wish everybody blessings. Thank you.